Throughout the month of February, Black History Month, I'll share stories highlighting issues and people making a difference. Tonight, I'm focusing on this year's theme, African Americans and the vote. 2020 marks the 150th anniversary of the 15th Amendment, which gave the right of black men to vote following the Civil War. To understand the present, we must first visit the past. The year was 1964. These three men were killed by members of the KKK in Mississippi. They were campaigning for all black Americans to get the right to vote. One year later, in August of 1965, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act, which eliminated the restriction on the voting rights for black people. But 55 years later, US Keith Mays says the fight isn't over. The African-American vote is under attack. Mays is a professor of African-American and African studies at the University of Minnesota. He says the national black history theme for 2020 speaks to the ongoing struggle for the right to vote. Collectively, black people don't really get the right to vote um, until 1965 uh, with the Voting Rights Act. We have to understand what's taking place, which is to say that there are people who stay up uh, every night uh, looking to take that right away from us. An example of that are the voter suppression laws that are that you see in every single state in the union. And I think that if, if one would put the voter registration laws, or vo voter suppression laws into context, you can actually compare them to some of the Jim Crow laws that were passed back in the late 19th century, early 20th century. Uh, mainly the poll tax, uh, the grandfather clause, and the literacy test. As America prepares for the 2020 presidential election, Mays says there are already tactics underway to suppress the black vote. So we got the voter suppression laws, right? The new ones, voter ID, we're gonna get rid of early uh, registration, we're gonna get rid of absentee, we're gonna get rid of voter, we're gonna curtail voter registration drives. You see the same thing today with a voter ID law. Nothing that on the face of it that says anything about race, but they know that African-Americans, particularly African-Americans who are poorer, who may not have a lot of means, who make a certain amount of money every year, they, they know for a fact that they are more likely than not to carry a government-issued ID. And so that's how they get us. Many of us may not be registered, so we show up on election day and register register that same day, but they're taking away our right to regist register on election day. The suppression is already underway. The question becomes, can the turnout uh, mitigate against the suppression? And when he talks about turnout, he's talking about the black voter turnout. And when he talked about suppression, here's an example he pointed to. In Texas, state lawmakers want criminal penalties for people who improperly fill out voter registration forms. If you look in Arizona, some Republicans there propose new voting rules complicating submitting an early ballot. And in Tennessee, GOP lawmakers are considering a bill that would fine groups involved in voter registration drives, which is something we've seen African Americans doing for decades. And all these reasons why voting is the focus of Black History Month? Exactly, for this year. Huge issue. One thing that, that Professor Mays always said to me that when we talked about that, I, I thought, it's just so silly. You know, when people talk about the black vote, you can't assume something's monolithic. That's ridiculous. We don't call it the white vote. I think what they're saying when, they, when people say the black vote, it's saying that as a black person, mm -hmm. your voice counts, your okay. voice matters, and we are not a monolithic group. 